I want to welcome all of you, more so uh, Christians from Bali Church of Christ, at uh, this moment that we are sharing concerning being connected to Christ Jesus. Uh, being connected to Christ Jesus had been spoken of in the one of the Gospels that shares about belief and life. And Jesus himself is now uh, speaking of how we need to be connected to him. And so he speaks of the true vine and uh, the branches. It's the vine. But we want to say that followers of Jesus are to bear a spiritual fruit. And that this is a fruit of righteousness. All Christians are capable of producing this fruit if they want to remain connected to him in obedience. A tree will always produce its fruit of its own. And uh, a father who is in heaven will always be happy if such fruits are produced in righteousness. Just as to a farmer, as we compare, uh, when he grows his seeds and he produces the fruits he wants, he will always be happy. So Jesus, when he talks of this, is so happy because he wants us to produce such a, a fruit of righteousness. How then can this be done? Uh, I do believe it would be through the good relationship with Jesus. But I want to share with you of, uh, a speech that came from one of uh, our brothers from Sierra Leone. He's a Monday person and he says, I cannot love you to the point of cooking a liver for you. So there is an attachment in this, that you show his love, that you bear a fruit. But Jesus' uh, righteousness of producing a fruit is, uh, is not of any attachment. He is uh, doing it out of his will, and he does not manifest beyond this point. He died that horrible death to see that we bear a fruit and this fruit will be manifested in another person. Now, the scripture reading uh, this morning is from the Gospel of John chapter 15, but I will not read all. It is from 15, 1 to 17. I will read but a part of it. So, the vine and the branches. I am the true vine, and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. While every branch that does bear fruit he prunes, so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear a fruit. By itself, it must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. Okay, as you continue reading up to verse 17, you will see that unless you are in Jesus, you abide by him, you are in obedience to him, you cannot bear a fruit. And so this is the fruit of righteousness, like we are saying. And uh, we want to ask ourselves a question as to why we should remain connected to Jesus such that we may bear this fruit. And these are some of the things that we should do. He perceives our freedom in business, in anger, in doubt, in misconception, and so calls us a friend, according to the scripture. And uh, he therefore cares for us. And this is why he knew that he is living this world. But for us to continue bearing a fruit, 
we must also know that he cares for us in such situations. Uh, another idea is he strengthens and encourages us during times of difficult. We would also be hit by storms, sickness, sorrow, uh, personal effects. Uh, like this time people are even uh, having problems, difficulties in paying for bills, children going back to school is a problem. Uh, and so when we look at uh, such, we are encouraged, he says, that we shall bear a fruit. In this, he remains our hope of the salvation, that such a fruit is to be born in him. He thinks about us and so have good plans for us. You see, he knows he's leaving the world, but he is promising us that we have to remain in him, that we have to bear a fruit. And this we would be talking of Galatians 5, 22 to 23. But uh, the fruit he's talking of here is the fruit of love to, for God and love for the neighbor. So that fruit that he wants us to bear must remain in us. So he thinks about us and so have good plans for us. Good relationship in us is very important. He will have good plans for us. And so we must know that he appointed you to bear a fruit wherever you are, whether you are having challenges, but he has appointed you to bear a fruit. And the fruit he had already shown to us, a fruit, his word. What then can we do to remain connected to him? Ah, these are the sites. Note that whenever you are, you are so important and that you are valued. So he has valued you as a very important person. And therefore, you have chosen a wise decision that you will not fail. You are valued. You will continue producing this fruit just because of the salvation that you have chosen. And he is therefore our rock of salvation. We remain strong in him. We bear that fruit. He has said, you are my church. And on this rock, nobody will overcome you. And so, you remain strong on him and you will bear a fruit. And the fruit will be of what he's teaching us here. And the second one is, we have to remain obedient. Obey his word. Maintain the commandment he has given us in the last verses. Love for God and the love for the neighbor. Love for God in this case summarizes the first four commandments. I says you obey the Sabbath, you worship only God. It summarizes only that. And therefore, when we look at the second, the first says, Worship the Lord with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind. And they summarized by the four commandments. And uh, also, love for the neighbor. That summarizes the six commandments. So we have to say that we imitate of this as his word. And so we are not foreigners. He's talking to us as a friend. And as a friend, he's making this promise to us. If we don't bear a fruit, then we shall be cut off. But if we bear a fruit, we shall remain in him. And so this will continue. So if we do this, we are obedient to his word by doing this, then we are taking the right way. The third word is, worship him in truth. He speaks this in John chapter 4, verses 24. He wants us to worship him in truth and spirit. And therefore, I want to tell you, you yourself, you are a church, not a building. Like more so this time, people are not going in buildings. You must know that where you are, you are a church. And he wants you to worship him wherever you are. Not putting on circle clothes, not telling people that we want the openings. Wherever you are, fellowship with your family. Train them, 
teach them how we can worship God in truth. Does not mean that we go to Jerusalem like people used to, but worship God from wherever you are. And that is what he wants us to do. During this time of COVID, wherever you are, do that. Look at yourself as a church. Praise him. Sing songs of praise and hymns of worship wherever you are, with your family, with your friends, until that things will be normalized, that only in the church we shall have the relationships, close relationships with others. But worship comes deep from your heart. So where you are, do that. And uh, with these few remarks, I want to let you know that uh, we are praying with you, we are standing with you, Whatever we are doing, you are doing outside there, please know that Mbale Church of Christ is with you as our listeners, as our friends. And Christ Jesus wants us to imitate of him that we bear this fruit of uh, loving God, loving neighbors, and therefore we shall be as good children. I want to say that God may bless all of you uh, during all this time that we are going through. God be with you all.